Hi, I'm Brian Warren. We're here today at the MCC Gene Haas Advanced Manufacturing Center at Marina Community College. We're partnering up with Practical Machinists each month to bring you educational content. In today's video, program freshman Michael Bishop is going to show you how we bore soft jaws. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our jaws here and we're going to mount them in the chuck. Now, being as this is a college shop, one of our first concerns is safety. So what we've done is we have pre-milled some material off the bottom to maximize diameter to allow the boring ring to get through the jaws safely. So now we have our chuck here. And as you can see on the, on the chuck here, on the master jaws, you can see little serrations or teeth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the teeth of the jaw up with the teeth on the chuck here. And what we're gonna do first is put our T-nut down inside the master jaw. And then we're going to take our jaw and a bolt and we're going to line all three of that and the T-nut up on the master jaw. One thing to remember while you're doing this is that the T-nut should always be down in the jaw. You should never have any of that sticking up out of the top. We're going to get everything lined up. Grab a bolt here. All right. We're going to put everything together. Another thing to remember is however many teeth you have sticking up off the top of the chuck, once you have some once you have everything lined up, that same number of teeth should be present on all three jaws. So in this case, when I line them up, I have three teeth exposed sticking up out of the top. So I'll have that for the other two jaws as well. All right guys, so now that our jaws are in, we're gonna mount our boring ring. And there are several different types. One like this is the scroll type where the inserts move. But in this case, I would like to use one that's a little more user friendly where all the inserts move at the same time as you scroll. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ring and we're gonna line up the numbers and we're gonna mount it inside the outside holes of each jaw. Alright, so we're going to find our number one hole. There we go. And we're going to line up each insert with the outside of the hole. And do some adjustments so we can get the diameter right. And one thing to remember when you're mounting the boring ring is to do it with the jaws open so you can adjust them as they close and everything will be clamped by the end of it. So we got it in here. And we're gonna do this in cycles of opening and closing the jaws until we get a little mark, which is right by our number one jaw, lined up in the center with one of the teeth. Opening and closing. Tightening down. We 
get that exactly right. And after everything's tightened down and aligned, we should be good. All right, so our jaws are in and our boring bar is in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our boring bar and try to find our inner diameter, where we're gonna start in our program. We're gonna do that by handle jogging the bar down and then handle jogging over until we're inside of the jaws. So we'll come over to our controller here. And the first thing we want to do is bring our bring our X down to X to zero. So we're going to write a quick little thing in MDI to do that. We have our tool T101, our rapid G00, our work offset G54, and our X0. And for safety, we'll put it on 25% rapid and we'll hit cycle start. Once we're down to the zero point, then we have a reference point that we can handle jog from, and that'll give us our exact position for our inner diameter. So we go to handle jog. I'm going to start in tenths or one hundredths, and that'll be quicker movements until we get to the boring bar, our boring ring. Handle jog over in Z. Bring X up, X positive a little, back to Z. Once we get closer, we'll move over to the thousandths increment. Once we're inside, we'll give our jaws a free spin, make sure everything's clearing, make sure the boring bar is not hitting. All right, everything's clear. So now what we'll do is we will turn our spindle on a couple hundred RPM and then we'll move our X positive slowly by holding down the button until we hear it touch and start to cut and then we'll know exactly where our inner diameter starts We're going to close our door, turn our spindle on, and we're going to start moving inward. And one thing you can do too is check your position in the operator area. We're starting at 1.22, then we'll move in. and it touched at 1.51. So we're gonna back off of it and turn our spindle off. And now we know, since our inner diameter starts at 1.51, we'll know in our program to add 100 to that, making it 1.61. All right, now that we've got our inner diameter, the next thing we have to do is actually generate the program to Make the, op make the operation. So instead of handwriting this, 
Haas controllers have a what's called a VPS, which will allow us to put in a put in our measurements in a conversational manner and generate the program that way. So we'll go to MDI edit and then we'll go over to VPS and we'll we'll go down each one and put in what needs to be put in. We'll start with our tool number, which in this case is tool number one. And where the tool number, there's the same offset, so tool one offset one. We'll have our max RPM. This boring ring is rated at about 700 RPM, so that's what we'll put our max at. Don't want to overload the ring. After that comes the depth of cut, and we're going back 1.8 inches. And that'll leave just a little bit of material on the back side of the jaw. It keeps us from having to hit the uh, keeps us from possibly hitting the chuck. Next is the Z rapid approach. We're going to put this at 1.1 <clears throat> and I know that seems like it's really far away from the material but it is a safety measure. It may cut a little air but it will keep us from uh, ramming into the boring ring or the side of the jaw. Existing hole diameter we have that from our inner diameter, which we said was 1.51. Now remember, you have to subtract 100 from your diameter where you touched. That way you're not running straight into material on the first cut. Just a little safety. All right, after that, we have a finished diameter. And now in this case, our finished diameter is whatever size jaws we're boring, which in this case is 2.5 inches. So our finished diameter will be 2.5. Key that in. And then we'll just go through and check things like our feed rate, which is at about 8 thousandths. Um, we're taking about 30 thousandths off with each cut. So nice and slow produces a but produces a better finish and it's safer. We'll go down through everything and once everything looks okay, got our measurements in, we will generate the program. One final check here. But uh, we have our finish pass. We have X home and Z home. So it looks like we're ready to generate. So we'll hit F4. And I'm going to output it to MDI, which is option number two. And there's our program. All right, we've got one more step before we can hit cycle start, and that is our Z face measure. Now, being as this doesn't have to be extremely precise, what we're going to do is we're going to touch off the face of the jaws <clears throat> like that. So we're gonna go to handle jog. We're gonna bring Z over. And you just want the tip of the boring bar tip of the insert to touch the face of the jaws. Start in larger increments. Right, now we're going to switch down to thousandths so we can move in a lot slower now that we're inside the jaw or inside the boring ring. You just want to move that in until it touches. Okay, once we've got it touched off, we'll go to offset, we'll go over to work, G54 on the Z axis, and then we'll hit Z face measure. Alright guys, our measurements are in, everything's finalized, it's time to hit cycle start.
All right, our program's finishing up. Let's open this thing up and check what our jaws look like. Do a quick turn here. Nice smooth surface. Everything looks good. That's how you bore out soft jaws. Thanks for watching.